match the diagram that we got from the OSS Faceting Guild. Now we need to turn this into a mesh and get it set up. So click on the outside end on and convert it to a spline. And then come down to the geometry section and you'll see the attach button and then attach the other files. Make sure you attach from the outside uh, end on. Oh, you could attach from the, the inside one if you'd prefer, it wouldn't make a difference. But just make sure you don't attach from the middle end on because this has been rotated. You see how the transform there is rotated? So that square, that square, that white square is on an angle, this white square is not. We don't want that rotation to be translated onto our final object. So select the outside one and attach the other two. And right click and convert it into an editable poly. Okay, so we're almost done. Okay, now we're pretty close to finishing here, but as you can see, there's kind of a couple of problems here. It's a weird shearing on this poly and doesn't look quite right. Now, personally, I like to build manually as much as I can. I just think it saves time in the end. So I'm going to delete all this. So go into the Edit Geometry section and untick Delete Isolated Vertices. And then just draw a big box around it and delete all the faces. Now, because we had that unticked, we now have all the vertexes information stored while all the face information is gone. And this is good. This means we can come into face mode and simply build our faces. Like so. Okay. So there we go. Now, as you can see, we've basically made an object which completely matches the topology of the diagram we had. Let's just quickly jump into the front viewport. And what we want to do is we want to pull the points down to match this image. So back in the top view, let's select. all the outside vertexes and simply pull them all the way down like so <coughs> easy as pie then in the top viewport again let's select the second row of vertexes And we want to pull them down as well. And we want to try and pull these down to make as straight a line as possible. This might be easier if you go into wireframe mode to do that. Now, just for my sake, I'm going to put a little bit of a kink. See how I put a kink there? Rather than making this perfectly straight or as straight as I can get, I'm going to put a kink here. It'll just give the light a little bit of uh, exaggerated data to uh, refract off. I think that might work a little better. Just make sure you don't do it like that. It doesn't kink inwards. It's got to kink outwards if you're going to put a kink in. And there you go. And there's the top of our diamond already completed. Simple as that. Okie dokie. Now, go back to your material editor and apply the bottom plate. And you probably already guessed, we're going to use the exact same technique. Let's have a quick look at this drawing. This drawing, once again, there's three levels. We have an outer uh, 
end gong, 16 sides. We have a middle end gong for these points here. And then we have a single point in the center. Okay, so let's go get to this. First thing we need to do is build our first end gong. And uh, let's do it like so. We know it's 16 sides. And we know that it's a radius of 95. Now it's very important that these two radiuses are exactly the same and they're both aligned to 0, 0, 0. If you can't remember the radius that you used, there's actually a little trick you can do. If we unhide our diamond, oops, we can go into the editable poly and click on border and highlight this whole bottom edge like so and then just click on create shape from selection and make sure it's clicked to linear and hit OK now we have a, a spline that exactly matches the spline that we will eventually be attaching it to which is a 95 radius uh, end gong I already knew that but if you didn't know this is a way to, to retrieve that data just one thing to note is you'll note the pivot point is still aligned to the object so to effectively use the world space we're going to realign that to center and now we can easily realign Anyway, back to the top view. So here's our spline we just created. Now we need to make another end gong. Make this one eight sides. It was. And once again, we rotate it 22.5 on the Z to flatten it out because it is, of course, an eight sided end gong, and that's how the maths work. And let's just make this one 42. And we're pretty much ready to go. Let's make that a little easier to see. Come into your spline from the outside. Remember the one that doesn't have the rotation. This one's got the rotation. Attach it and then convert it to editable poly. And once again, this isn't what we want. We want to rebuild this topology to match. Come down here, click on delete isolated vertices so it's not ticked, and hit the delete button. Now once again we have all our vertices. But we still need a vertex in the very center. So simply select one of your vertexes, it doesn't matter which one, and drag copy it, clone it to an element, and then we want to align it to the center to get our last vertex. Now we can do it by sight, but once again we're working in world space, so we can simply right click on the world move and align everything to zero and it's bang in the correct position. Now just like before, now that we have our vertexes, we can simply create the faces Okay, now once again we need to match this to the side view, but unlike before, we're taking it from the bottom. So let's just align it in the Z and we'll just do pivot to pivot. 